Okay, so we're going to start actually using the full formula for the arithmetic sequence. So you can again remind yourself for the formula sheet it's here, and maybe we can add some definitions to it as we go. So let's take a look. Any term in an arithmetic sequence can be found using the formula, and there you see it again. t sub n is equal to a plus n plus bracket n minus 1 bracket d. And so the parts that we have to identify are just what these, what the different bits in the formula are. So you'll notice A is the first term. We've identified that from the previous section. And same with D. We know what that is. That's the difference between them. So the two things that we've got to get our head around are the t term number N and the value of the term number, which is what we say is T, and then we put a little N next to it. So that's sometimes T sub N is how you might say that, because it's a subscript for N. So n is the term number you wish to find. So this can get confusing, but let's look at a sequence that we have for ourselves. Um, if we take 1, 6, 11, 16, 21 as our sequence, if I break this into a table for myself, putting it into boxes, what I have on the bottom is the values. Those are the actual values of the sequence. So the first term here is worth 1, and that's the value. So we would put the t here with a little n. But I'm saying that 1 is the first term. That's put my n above. So the first term is 1, and the second term is 6, and the third term is 11, and the fourth term is 16, and the fifth term is 21. So n is which number, which which number it is in the sequence. So it's the term number. Which one is it? How far along are you on? The sixth term, the eighth term, the hundredth term? And t is the value. How big was that number? What was the value of that number in the term? So these sometimes get confused, but we'll get our head around them as we start to apply it and practice it. So if we look at an example, if a is equal to 5 and d is equal to 2, find the hundredth term. And this is an important thing to notice here, is that sometimes we write it out as the word a hundredth term, and sometimes you write it as t sub 100, because that little 100 underneath means what's the value of the hundredth term. So what we can get out of this, which they haven't identified yet, is that our first term is a, and it's 5, our common difference is d and it's 2, and the hundredth term, this tells me that I'm looking for n equal 100. And that little tiny hundred there, remember, that's where the t has a little n, so when that little tiny number down there is equal to something, you know that you have the n there, not the t. So in this case, n is equal to 100, and it's the t sub n, this whole value thing that we're trying to find. So sometimes I just refer to that as t. So in one way, you could actually write out all the terms, starting off with 5 and going up by 2 each time, 7, 9, 11. But do that for 100 times, and it's going to get pretty tedious and awful to do. So we can use our formula. So again, this formula is given to you. You just have to be able to apply it correctly in your calculator. So what we're saying is that since a is equal to 5, instead of writing a, we're going to write 5. And then instead of writing n, we're going to write 100 because we want to know what is the value of the hundredth term. And then our common difference is 2. So we're basically plugging in what we know to get what we want. So if you plug that into your calculator, 5 plus bracket 100 minus 1 bracket times 2 you get 203. So the value of the hundredth term is 203. So if we look at another example, here we've got a is equal to 160. So again, instead of writing a, they write 160. And then here we have d is equal to negative 3. So instead of writing d, they e write down negative 3. And they want to find the fiftieth term in the sequence, so that's n. We're going to write down 50 for n instead, and you plug it into your calculator, and in this case you'll get 13. So the first term is 160, but the 50th term is 13 because it's going down by 3. Remember that negative there means down by 3, or subtracting 3 each time. 
So in these problems, we're going to ask you to figure out what the value of a specific term is. So the things that you need to identify, make sure we identify them. A is equal to, D is equal to, and N is equal to. And then find your T, because that's what you're looking for. So the 50th term, OK, well, that tells me they want me to find out for the number 50 along the way. After 50 terms, what is it equal to? What's my value? but it's the 50th, it's a placeholder there, so this is n equals 50. Again, the first term there is a, so we know a is equal to 1. And let's figure out what our difference is here. So what am I going up in? How do I get from 1 to 4, and from 4 to 7, and from 7 to 10? Well, it looks like a plus 3 to me, but if you weren't certain, you could always find d by doing a subtraction between any of the terms. So you could do 4 minus 1 and you always want to do it the bigger, how do I say this, the first term minus the second term maybe. So if you need to find d, do second term minus first term. And then just common sense check yourself here. This is equal to 3, that's a positive number and I can see that my sequence is going up. So that's probably okay. If I'd accidentally written down the wrong way and done 1 minus 4, I would have gotten negative 3. And if you pay attention to that, well, I can't have a negative 3 here because I'm going, the numbers are getting bigger every single time. So pay attention to that. Um, if the numbers are getting bigger each time, you should have a positive D. So now that we've got that, numbers that we need, the A, the N, and the D, we're going to look for the value of the 50th term so that's what I'm going to say, t of 50, so it's the 50th term, is going to be equal to a, which is 1, plus, again I'm using this formula here, a equals 1 plus bracket, n in this case is 50, minus 1, bracket, and then times by 3. So there I've got all the information that I need, and if you plug this into your calculator, 1 plus bracket, 50 minus 1 bracket times 3, you get 148. So the 50th term is equal to 148. So if you look at another example here, again thinking about identifying what we know, A in this case is 10, and D, well let's think about this, D we're going from 10 to 6 to 2 to negative 2, okay we're going down so it should be a negative number. So I'm going to take the second one, 6, subtract the first one from it, and I'm going to get a negative 4. So d is equal to negative 4. So I can see here, it makes sense that I get a negative, because the numbers are getting smaller every time. So d is negative 4, and n, remember I said that little tiny number underneath the t? That's going to be your n, so n is equal to 11. So using our blanket formula again, t sub 11, because that's what we're looking for, is going to be equal to the first term, which is 10, plus bracket n, well we want the 11th term, so 11 minus 1 bracket times d, which is negative 4. And one thing that you can do for yourself if you want to make things a little bit simpler um, is you can uh, kind of simplify some of the stuff in your head if you want, but if it's too much for you, don't worry about it, you can always use a calculator. So 10 plus this is an example of it, well 11 minus 1 is just 10 times negative 4, so I can simplify that and get negative 30. Um, but you can always just do it the whole way through if you want, 10 plus bracket 11 minus 1 bracket times negative 4, and you'll still get negative 30. So either way. Um, Alright, so take your time with these and just make sure that you identify what the A, the D, and the N are, and then you're plugging it into your formula and you get the actual value for yourself. So, see how you go.